I'm Pat Doris. Welcome to the story. We're starting in Vancouver at their first safe stay village. It's a place for homeless folks. This used to be a place full of camps and tents, but now it's cleaned up, organized, and safe. We're going to take a look back at the last six months of this place to see what's worked and what hasn't. We're also going to take a look at Portland to see what's working or not there. But before we begin those, let's first talk with a woman here who says this place saved her life. I never had a, had a hard time up here, and then this year after COVID hit, that's just when everything changed for me, you know. Before moving into Vancouver's Safe Stay community in April, Courtney Ligman lived in a tent on a trail near Interstate 205. It's safe. It's safe compared to like my tent. I don't have to worry about people coming in and stealing my stuff. You know, when you're out living in a tent, you can't lock a door. And then if you have to leave to go anywhere, people are constantly going through your stuff trying to take from you. So, like, this is just like, you know, it's a safe place. The community marks six months of existence at the end of June. It's off Northeast 51st Circle near the YMCA. Volunteers like Sean Kingsbury keep the place looking nice. The city of Vancouver issued a report showing what worked over the last six months. Of 46 people served, 11 got jobs, 32 got access to health care, including physical, mental and behavioral health, 16 got ID cards, one got a high school diploma, 40 had housing assessments done, moving them a step closer to permanent housing. And of those, 14 moved into permanent housing, and 10 others are in the process of getting permanent housing. Jamie Spinelli is the Homeless Response Coordinator for Vancouver. I asked if 14 was a low number for permanent housing. I feel like it's a great number. I know, you know, numbers from shelter to housing tend to be kind of low. People, people tend to kind of stagnate when they move into shelter for a whole variety of reasons. They get comfortable there. You know, they've got some stability, so they want to stay. Um, because they're not out on the streets, they're not like the emergency focus for services, you know. Focuses tend to be um, placed on folks who are outside. So I feel like the numbers out of here are, are fantastic, 30%. That's a, good, that's a good rate. Mike Palmer is one of the people who used to live here. I'm going to be 55 years old. I've worked my entire life. I, we don't do any of the extracurricular stuff. We just work. And when, you know, you... When you work and you lose your home because you're a worker, it's kind of tough. He said he worked for a temporary job company but could not afford housing. He and his wife slept in parks near Camas until he heard about this safe state community. The couple stayed here for a while, then recently moved into their own apartment. Oh, it's awesome. I mean, I got a key to my own house. I can walk in and walk out and, you know, cook my own food and do what I need. But if it wasn't for this place, being a start line to get to that place, I would still be there. Besides helping people here, the city points out the community lowered police calls by 30 percent within a 500-foot radius of the community compared to the same time a year earlier. EMS calls to the community also dropped by 10 percent. Vancouver now operates two safe rest communities like this and has three more planned. The city of Portland has one safe rest community. It's near Multnomah Village in southwest Portland. It opened this last June, and by July, the federal government said the community violated a deed restriction the government had with the city. A city spokesman sent us a statement that reads in part, We've assembled a team, reviewed more than 100 sites, selected and secured permission for the use of six sites, opened one safe rest village, have two under construction, and the remaining three are in the planning permitting phase. Back in Vancouver, one thing that did not work, not everyone who arrived stayed. Eleven people left during that first six months. But don't try telling Courtney Ligman this place does not work. It changed her life. Just, I couldn't even look people in the face. I was like, I'd lost like a big part of myself. And I didn't even realize it until I came here. And I was like, oh man. And then starting to feel like yourself again, it just, I'm going to cry. But, you know, it's, yeah, getting your dignity back, it makes a difference. I get emotional because it's like saved my life. Really Out in her tent, she felt less than human, her dignity and hope stolen. Not anymore. This place definitely saved my life. And the people here are amazing. The staff is like, oh, you can talk to them about anything. You know, they just want to help. Like, they know that we're, like, not coming in here sober. Like, I was a massive alcoholic, a meth addict when I came in here, you know. And they helped me go to Rainier Springs. They helped me to go to detox. They helped me with everything, you know. And the lady who helped save my life, she's the one who watched my dog when I went to rehab. So, like, yeah, they saved my life. 
you can tell it's had a huge impact. Thanks to Courtney and Mike for sharing their stories. It's inspiring to see a program that is working and people who are taking steps to improve their own lives and leave the streets behind. We magnify what's wrong when we see it, so it seems fair play to magnify what is right as well. Homelessness is not a hopeless problem. Vancouver's program looks like something that holds great promise, which is why leaders from cities around the country are now visiting to see what they're doing.